Welcome to my video review of the Qbot X15. This is a five and a half inch large screen phone. I'll show you quickly what you get included in the box. Phone comes in a plastic case cover here, so you just pull that out. There is an additional screen protector provided with a cleaning cloth. You do get one pre-fitted, a plastic one, on the front of the handset when you take it out of the box. We have a quick start guide here. Micro USB cable for charging and data transfer and we've got a UK 3 pin plug adapter here for the USB cable. This small tool on the right here is used to open up the memory card slots which I'll show you in a moment how to do that. Taking a closer look at the handset you can see the display here, nice big 5.5 inch. There is a bezel going all the way around. At the bottom here, although you can't see them that well, is the touch capacitive controls, the three main Android ones. We'll look at them a bit closer in a minute. Moving on to the side we have the standard volume controls at the top here. There's a slight amount of play in those but um, they're metal as well as the edge of the case which is very solid in feel and there's the standard power button here. On to the top a 3.5mm stereo output for headphones and on the bottom here we have the micro USB charging port with the grills for the single speaker that's inside the unit. To open the covers on the side you just push the tool in and that releases them. You have two SIM slots here and one of them can be used in combination with a memory card up to 32 gigabytes. If you're using the two SIM cards you can't use the memory card at the same time and they take a nano and a micro SIM. What I'm doing now is showing you the touch capacitive buttons. We have the three main Android control buttons here, but they're quite faint and they're not backlit, so that's something to bear in mind. In bright daylight, you'll be able to see them quite easily. In the dark, not so. They really don't show up. I've brought a small LED light in here just to show you that they are actually there. Um, that's a minor point. You, you know that they're there. It's just a case of pressing to the side or the middle, but it's an area which could be improved possibly on the handset. Looking at the back of the phone, we have a plastic cover that's provided. That comes out of the box. You can take that off. It offers some protection, but you'd probably want to get a proper case for it. It's better than having nothing included, though. Um, build quality feels very nice. It's a nice solid handset. The trim is very nicely made. It's solid metal. On the back here, we have a 13 megapixel camera, which it says is interpolated to 16 megapixels, and an LED light here. On the front of the phone, we have a front-facing 5 megapixel camera which is upscale to 8 megapixel there's the speaker here and there's a sensor here there's one point to note on the phone is there is no notification light anywhere on the handset so that's something which is missing off of this particular model a couple of nice features we have gesture sensing there's a ability to learn actions and you can customize these gestures at the bottom here there's also a smart wake option if you turn that on, double click to wake screen, draw right to switch the next song. So you have the gestures there, you can use those if you want. It might take you a while to learn them, but you can customise them to your own particular taste. That's quite a nice add-on to have for the phone. Otherwise, it's generally pretty much the same as you would get with any Android 5.1 phone. Now, just for fun, I ran a few benchmarks, so you can see the scores on those. And if you're so inclined, you can have a look and compare them to other handsets. Move on to the Geekbench score, 1816. Both of the benchmarks showed it was pretty much around the sort of upper mid level for handsets. Honestly, with the 2 gig of RAM and the quad core processor, I don't think anybody's going to be unhappy with the performance. Um, it's quite a fast handset, it doesn't feel slow in any way at all. It's more than quick enough for anybody's use, and it did a nice job with the gaming as well. Pulling down the main Android quick access menu here, we see we have a torch option as well. That gives you quite a decent brightness on the torch there, and that's also used for video and stills recording. One thing I noticed with the X15 was that the charging speeds were a bit longer than I'd normally expect for a phone of this size. Um, so I tested out quite a few different cables and found that even the out of the box cable was giving the same result as micro USB charge optimized ones. These are a variety of different ones that I tried and the best charging speeds that I got were about 0.8, 0.81 even with the battery run quite the way down under 
Normally I'd expect to get a 1.2 amp, 1.3 amp charge. So just bear in mind that with the X15 your charging speeds are going to be a little bit longer than you would normally get for a larger screen smartphone. I tested the camera outside and inside and I thought generally it was quite good. There was a bit of over processing on some of the images and the same applies for the video footage. It was quite good, a um, little bit heavy on the sharpening but um, the details were quite impressive really for a phone camera. This is a few shots that I've taken outside. This is a standard exposure at the full resolution. You can see the details are pretty good on this. There's no, there's no real complaints regarding that. Now you may have noticed that the the sky has kind of blown out a bit or it's a bit underexposed in the foreground. I tested the HDR and got that result. So there's a HDR mode which brightens things up quite a bit and it helps to pull the highlights in. It's quite good. You have to keep it steady because it takes a couple of shots at the same time. Again, a little bit heavy on the processing but generally pretty good performance for the camera front and rear. Summing up for me with the QBot X15, positive points would be the screen, very good, very impressed with that. The performance of the processor and 2GB of RAM, quad-core processors, plenty fast enough for anybody, and 2GB of RAM is quite a lot. You're not going to struggle at all day-to-day -day using this phone, even if you do a bit of gaming, it does a nice job there. It didn't drop frame rates even on fairly new games. Negative points would be the capacitive buttons here are not backlit and they're quite hard to see there is no notification light anywhere at all on the handset which is a shame because that's something which is very minor but can be quite useful um, if you've walked away from the phone for a while you can see that you have a message or something else needs your attention this doesn't have anything like that the other potential downside is the relatively slow charging at about 0.8 amps is the highest I measured, the maximum speed, which is a fair bit below what I would expect. You'd expect about 1.2, 1.3 amps, so the phone's going to charge a bit slower than other handsets that I've tested. If that's a problem for you, I don't know. The battery life is quite good. You shouldn't have a problem getting a day, day and a half out of this phone. The power management is quite energy efficient so if, if you turn off the display and leave the phone it's not draining the battery down it really is going into a low power state 